Hi, welcome to this video on uh, how I do bottling. Obviously, over the course of this unpleasantness, having a constant source of beer on tap has been pretty much the only thing actually getting me through this. But even people who have fully committed to the kegerator ideal will often need to put beer into bottles sometimes for giving out to people and sometimes for things like competitions back in the good old days when we could do this sort of thing so this is what I use uh, I've experimented with other things but this is pretty much what I've settled on it's the Blickman beer gun and it's fairly straightforward there's a beer line a gas line uh, two triggers for the beer and the gas and the valve is at the end of the dispense tube. This is supposed to be an important design feature because it means that the dispense tube doesn't empty in between filling bottles because that time if it has a back sealing valve the next time you open it the beer will mix with air in the tube before entering the bottle which will increase foaming. The actual operation of this is fairly straightforward. The black disconnect attaches to the liquid out of your keg and the gas line to any spare line coming off of your regulator. The beer trigger is pulled and the valve at the end of the metal tube moves forward and beer flows through the beer line and into the bottle. The gas trigger at the back of the handle is used for purging the bottles before you fill them and for uh, purging the headspace after you've filled them. This is useful of course because we always want to eliminate as much oxygen from our package beer as we possibly can. So I've had some intermittent problems with uh, infections in the past including some that I think can be traced back to picking up an infection in the bottle rather than uh, at any other stage in the process so I've trying to be a little bit paranoid about sanitation so if you see anything here that looks off please tell me I run sanitizer star san in this case through the uh, but the through the beer gun line I leave it for a few minutes and then uh, pump carbon dioxide through it as well just to get everything out of that and leave it oxygen free hopefully I do this before and after using the beer gun to bottle. Uh, for the bottles I tend to get them, uh, in this case I'm using brand new plastic bottles and I get them right out of the box, put them in the dishwasher, run them on the dishwasher without detergent for a cycle and then take them out, rinse them with star sand and put them on the bottling tray. So the actual process of filling a bottle is uh, fairly simple, it's mostly the setting up, sanitising, cleaning, putting everything away, uh, that's what takes most of the time. I like to set up on the floor, um, it means I don't have to get out chairs and tables and take over the whole living room. I like to have everything set out around me, very important to stay hydrated of course, uh, you've got to have your pint there. Uh, preferably of course of the uh, beer that you're actually filling. I'll rinse the bottles again with the star sand. Uh, I'll put ice cubes in the star sand to try and make the bottles a little bit colder and if I've got time or if it's possible I'll chill the bottles as well. Uh, so if you're putting cold beer into cold bottles that will reduce fobbing and foaming in the bottles as well. So first thing you purge the bottle with a blast of CO2 with the back trigger. You do about I do about four or five seconds of CO2 in a bottle this size. Hopefully that will force out most of the air. And then you start filling with the bottle on an angle so the tip of the dispense tube is submerged in liquid as quickly as possible. The fill can be quite slow. This is doing it in real time. Uh, you can manage the rate of flow by upping the pressure into the keg 
I use a, a propane regulator that gives quite low PSI, so I'll normally dispense from the keg between about 1 and 10 PSI uh, using the propane regulator to do that. It, uh, it's a balancing act. Uh, so the more pressure you use, the faster you'll fill the bottle, but the more foaming you'll get. And then on the other hand, if you don't use enough pressure, uh, the the beer will uh, release carbon dioxide, so you'll get foaming there. So it's a good trick to uh, find exactly the right pressure to dispense that particular beer. When it's full, you just give it a quick blast of carbon dioxide and hopefully cap it on the foam. Hi, so that was my, uh, that's basically how I do bottling at home. Uh, apologies, of course, for the uh, rather basic content and the amateurish editing. Uh, I was trying to be as thorough as I can. Hopefully I'm not teaching you to suck eggs too much. Uh, I mentioned in part of it that I have used other things before. This is what I was using before, like a homemade semi counter pressure thing it's just got a, a disconnect a tube picnic tap uh, a copper pipe as a dispensing tube and you shove it in the bottle so it forms a seal with the rubber bung let it flow and then like burp the bung to to get the beer flowing it worked really well actually it was one of the compared to things like uh, bottling tubes and counter pressure fillers which were quite fiddly this one worked quite well, but it's it's a bit grotty and uh, hard to clean. So uh, I'm really happy with the Blickman beer gum. I think that's pretty good, and I'm definitely going to stick with that for the foreseeable. So the beer I was bottling in the video is uh, this one. It's my Czech Desitka, the pale Czech pale lager. So we'll just. Uh, a little bit of a fizz when you open and it pours reasonably well not too much in the way of lost carbonation so yeah that's the beer so it was in the midlands competition for anyone who had it in that but if not cheers <laughs>